we suddenly jump to an E flat major chord. These two chords are once again a tritone apart. Hey everyone, my name is Christoph Jakob. I'm a music composer for video games. A new season has just started in Splatoon 3 and the devs have decided to give us yet another brand new Splat Band. H2 War. Or probably more like H2 Wo? I didn't expect another new Splat Band so soon, especially after they just introduced Yoko and the Gold Bazookas in the previous season. One of my favorite bands in the entire franchise and you should check out my videos where I take apart all of their songs. Unlike that band though, we seem to be getting only two new songs this time. Today let's have a look at Rip, Stop and Go, the tune that has been used in the trailer. Let's find out how whoa the music truly is and if there really are any similarities to Wet Floor or not. Before we get into it, I still have a handful of Splash 2 CDs available. So my take on Splatoon music. There are only a few left, so grab one before it's too late. Anyway, let's get into the video. Nice intro. Once again, pretty fast paced. I really like the, the rhythm in this tune. H2O seems to be continuing the trend of having quite fast-paced multiplayer tracks. Considering that Splatoon 3 actually is faster than the previous games, I'd say that makes sense. Just judging from the intro and the first section, I can already tell who the star of this band is probably supposed to be. Whoever is playing the bass in this tune, and also the other tune, I already listened to it, I just had to, surely must have had a ton of fun. But before we look at that, let's check out some of the other instruments. The intro starts with a quite strong hook, which isn't that interesting harmonically, but it's pretty awesome rhythmically. The drums are accentuating this melody instead of doing their entirely own thing, in a similar manner to what they've done in Three Horn Circus. The electric guitars are super straightforward, there's not really anything worth pointing out, except for the fact that they sound juicy and amazing. And we have to talk about the final two chords of this first section. All we've been getting here so far is just one single chord, a G minor chord. Both the guitars and the bass are outlining this chord for pretty much the entire section. Until two very unexpected chords appear. And it's these two chords, I'd say, which give this tune a typical Splatoon vibe. We're jumping from G minor to D flat major or C sharp major, which one isn't part of the key that was just established, G minor, and two is a tritone away from G minor. So one of the most dissonant intervals out there. This actually also means that both those chords, both G minor and D flat major or C sharp major, whatever you wanna call it, don't have a single note in common. So you may be wondering why it still sounds fairly natural and good. I honestly don't really know, but my guess would be that it still feels normal or weird, but not in a bad way weird, if that makes sense, because it only sits there for like two seconds before it jumps back to G minor. I also gotta say that I really like this chord progression that's coming now. While H2O is apparently an entirely new band, I'm still not sure if this is actually how you pronounce it, I still think that at least the vocal approach is quite similar to Wet Floor. And that is probably one of the main reasons why so many people, including myself, expected this to be a return of Wet Floor. One element I really like is that we get to hear the rhythm that was used in the intro again. <laughs> One of the most common things one can do when writing one's own music is to make use of repetition. 
If someone tells you that repeating certain progressions, chords, rhythmic patterns or melodic structures is bad or lazy, then you should probably hang out with some other people. Repetition is actually a quite great way to quickly hammer a piece of music into one's memory. Though not always, but often it's thanks to repetition of certain elements that tunes even feel catchy to begin with. And believe it or not, but repetition can even fix mistakes. So next time you're playing an electric guitar solo, for example, and you make an odd sounding mistake, why not just lean into that and make it part of the solo? If you repeat certain mistakes, they can suddenly become more plausible. Ow! Ow! Um, all right, not like this, of course, but you know what I'm trying to say. The more you repeat something, the more your brain will get accustomed to it. I really like the, the rhythm in this tune. And the vocals. It's gonna explode, it's gonna explode. I've been making so many different videos about so many different musical topics on this channel and it has taken until today for me to actually... <laughs> and it has taken until today that I can finally talk about what's called the circle of fifths. Now, I have to admit that I actually never really understood this topic up until like maybe like one or two years ago myself. <laughs> but simply put, when someone talks about a circle of fifth thingy or a circle of fifth sequence in music, all that means is that every single chord in that progression is a fifth away from the chord you just played before. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because that's exactly what's happening in the tune here. So we're starting on an E minor chord, E minor 7 to be more precise, but it's kind of the same. We move down a fifth to A major. Then we move down another fifth to D minor 7. And you guessed it, then we move down another fifth to G major. Repeat. What I once again really love here is that when we get to hear the A major chord for the second time, we suddenly jump to an E flat my little chord. <laughs> we suddenly jump to an E flat major chord. I talked about this concept earlier. These two chords are once again a tritone apart. But in this case specifically, it actually doesn't really sound odd at all, at least to my ears. It actually sounds quite epic, heroic, adventurous, dramatic and emotional. Because this E flat minor chord is actually the flat 6 of our key. You know the flat 6. I talk about this so-called flat 6 chord in almost every single video of mine. So <laughs> This flat 6 chord leads us back to our home base, which is G minor. Or that, or half time. <laughs> Very nice chord. This reminds me a little bit of clickbait here. The composers really loved making use of halftime and double time in the soundtrack, didn't they? It's an element in so many of these songs. Once the climax section hits, the drums play only half as fast as they used to. This is called halftime and essentially just means that the perceived tempo of the tune has decreased, even though technically we didn't change anything about the tempo at all. There's also some really nice synth work in this section. I have to admit that it has really taken me quite a while to figure out some of the chords in this song. Usually you can just look at what the bass is doing and the bass is usually a quick and easy guide for figuring out the chords. But the bass is so frantic and awkward here in the best ways possible that I'm not even sure if this progression is right. So correct me if I'm wrong. It's an awesome progression either way.
While I do think that Rip, Stop and Go is a really nice tune, I think I prefer Yoko and the Gold Bazookas just a little bit. But to be quite honest, it's probably too early to judge that. What do you guys think? Do you like H2WO? How do you pronounce H2WO? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Pa! Man, the drummer and the bassist really must have had fun. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Follow me on my socials, consider joining my Discord server or check out some of my music. Thanks as usual and I'll see you guys next time.